Hello, in this video I am going to be talking to you about writing triads in four parts. But before I do that, I feel that I need to say that I am making some assumptions in this series of videos. Primarily, I'm making assumptions about what you should already know. That you should already know about scales and key signatures and time signatures and that how triads and seventh chords are constructed as independent entities and how they are constructed above a scale so that you know about the different types of triads that you can have, the different qualities they are, the different types and qualities of seventh chords that you can have and where those reside in a scale. You know what I mean when I say a one chord or a four chord or a five chord. And if you have a full understanding of those things, also of intervals and how intervals work, if you have a full understanding of all of those things, all the basic elements of music, then you'll be in good shape for these videos. If you do not have an understanding of those things, or there are parts of those things you understand and other parts where you're still a little bit shaky, go back and review the videos on the foundational fundamental elements of music. Make sure you have those concepts clear in your mind, then you'll be ready to go on to this series of videos about the common practice era. So, how do you take a triad and write it in four parts? This is a relatively simple concept. First of all, let's just remind ourselves what we mean by a triad. So with a triad, we're talking about a three note chord where each of the members of the chord are a third apart from each other. Here's a triad, and those of you who remember this from last semester will remember that this is in fact an F major triad. We would refer to it by the capital letter F. This is an F major triad, it has F, A, and C. The three members of the triad are a third apart, and uh, there is specifically a major third and a minor third, that's what makes it a major triad. We know also that there are minor triads and augmented triads and diminished triads, and that's perfectly fine. You should have all that in your mind. If you want to take a triad and write it in four parts, perhaps first I should explain what do I mean by four parts. Well, in this style of music, what we often write our harmony in its simplest form in what are what's referred to as four parts. Four parts as in four voice parts. Our music is written so that it mimics the choral divisions of voices. We write one note for the sopranos, one note for the altos, one note for the tenors, and one note for the basses. SATB style. Sopranos, altos, tenors, and basses. We use the term voices and voicings to refer to the way we're writing the chord out. We say we are going to voice this chord in four parts. You can voice chords in five parts, you can voice chords in six parts, you can voice chords in three parts or two parts. But for the purposes of understanding this system, we find that four-part harmony is a great starting point. If then later you want to write two-part harmony or three-part harmony or six-part harmony or seven-part harmony, it certainly we can figure out how to do that. But for reference, in this course we deal with four-part harmony and we deal with therefore voicing chords into four parts. That means that at, in any given moment in our progressions of harmony that we're going to write, you want to have the soprano singing a note, the alto singing a note, the tenor singing a note, and the bass singing a note. These four voice parts, it, that's a convenient reference. These, this could be a trumpet, a horn, a trombone, and a tuba or it could be woodwind instruments, or it could be stringed instruments. It, we use the term voicing, and we use the term soprano, alto, tenor, and bass to refer to the top note, the note that's next down from that, the note that's next down from that, and the bottom note. That's really all it means, but rather than getting into that word, you know, the note just under the soprano and the note just above the bass, we just say it's the soprano, the alto, the tenor, and the bass. And that's a convenient label for us when it comes to talking about these particular, the way in which a, a, a chord is stacked up. So let's now look at the fact that we have a chord here, a triad, and we want to write it in four parts. So the immediate problem you're going to observe, one assumes, is that we only have three parts. And yet I'm saying we're going to write it in four parts. So what are we going to do? We're going to take one of these notes and we are going to double it. That is to say, it is going to appear twice. So we're going to start with, again, our, this time we'll write it in a treble and bass clef. 
we will write our soprano with a stem going up, our alto with a stem going down on the treble clef, we will write our tenor with a stem going up on the bass clef, and our bass with a stem going down on the bass clef. So it will look like this. Here's the chord. This is one way that that chord might be written out. Now, what do you see there? Well, you see, first of all, that I have not used any notes here in this chord that are not already over here. All right? I have not added any notes. I've doubled a note. That's to say one of these notes is in here twice. But I haven't added any new notes. So what do I have here? Well, I have an F. Okay, one F. I have a C. One C. I have an A. One A. And I've put a second F into the alto part. Notice soprano, the stem is up, stem down in the alto, stem up in the tenor, stem down in the bass, soprano, alto, tenor and bass, and in this case both the bass and the alto have the same note. They're an octave apart, but it's the same letter name of note. This is all you do when you're taking a three-part chord and you're voicing it in four parts. You are simply choosing one of the notes to appear twice. The chord can then be written in any order. Any of these notes can be on the top or the bottom. There are some guidelines for when you have certain notes on the top or the bottom, and we'll get to those in subsequent videos. But this is a perfectly acceptable chord. That has the same three notes, right? I have F, A, and there's an A in the bass, and C. That is a perfectly acceptable chord, taking this F major chord and writing it in four parts. It does mean that now the lowest part is not the root of the chord. We'll get to that. That puts it in inversion. You already know what inversions are from understanding triads and we'll talk about what happens when you put chords in inversions and how you use them in this particular context of the common practice. But as an isolated chord, as just an entity, that is perfectly fine. It has the three notes of the triad, and one of those notes has been doubled. That is the basic concept I want you to get today. I want you to take a moment now to get out some music paper, to write out some triads, just basic standard triads, they can be major, minor, augmented, or diminished, and then to write those triads in three or four different configurations in four parts. Some of those triads will have the root in the bass, some of them will have the third in the bass, some of them might have the fifth of the chord in the bass, that doesn't matter. Experiment with how you spread the voices out as well. Perhaps some of them will have some sopranos up higher, some of them will have the basses down lower, some of them may have more of a gap between the alto and the tenor. Just try writing them in four parts. There are some guidelines that we will get to in, in subsequent videos that will help you to have an idea of where, what the best practices are and what the most common practices are in this era, in the common practice era. What, what made these uh, triads work in the common practice here, or make some work in the common practice here, there are some guidelines for that. But initially, get the concept in your mind. You can have a three-voice triad, and you can take it and voice it into four parts by doubling, by having one of these three notes appear twice. Get that in your mind, feel comfortable with that. When you feel you've got that, go on to the next video, and we'll take this to the next level.